far, over six million people in the UK have had their first dose of the COVID vaccine, but GPs across England and the government's scientific advisory group, SAGE, have raised concerns that large numbers of people from BAME communities are reluctant to take it. Well, we're joined now by Dr Ranj, Dr Zoe and Dr Nigat, who are helping us launch a new This Morning campaign to encourage everyone to take up the offer of a vaccine. And good morning to all three of you. Thank you for joining us here today. And Dr Ranj, I wanted to start with you first of all, because these findings by SAGE are really, really worrying. And when you saw this, you wanted to jump into action. So for anybody sitting there, quite simply, who's considering not having the vaccine, what would you say to them? Um, the findings aren't just worrying, Holly. They are heartbreaking. Like The SAGE report shows that over 70% of black people were unlikely to get the vaccine. Over 40% of Pakistani or Bangladeshi people were unlikely. Echoes a report from the Royal Society of Public Health back in December, and the 1928 Institute, which is an Oxford University-based think tank, which looks specifically at British Indians, the largest ethnic minority community in the UK. This is my community. And only just over 50% of them would agree to have the vaccine. That breaks my heart because, and it really hit home for me last week when I popped up to, I work in intensive care, and I popped up to adult intensive care just to help out for a second. And there was an Asian lady on a ventilator there, and she reminded me of my mum. And I really had to struggle to hold back tears because I thought this is not good enough. This community has been disproportionately affected and we have something that can help. There is absolutely no reason, no scientific reason for us to refuse the vaccine. Listen to the doctors in your community. Listen to the experts and other healthcare professionals in your communities like myself, like Zoe, like Nigga, who are standing up and saying, we've had our vaccines. We believe in this vaccine. This is the best thing we have. Please don't believe the fake news. Listen to the experts and get your vaccination done if you're due. My parents certainly will be when they are, but that's because they have the benefit of me talking to them and they're not listening to some of the misinformation that's being targeted directly at them. And this is the worry, isn't it, um, all of you? Uh, the, the thing is, Ranj, that um, this is where fake news can actually kill people, uh, that these uh, false stories, false rumours, incorrect information uh, brought out by whoever uh, it happens to be irresponsible enough to do it has potentially blood on their hands for making this crap up. Absolutely. There are specific, there are small but very vocal groups out there who are targeting ethnic communities because they know they are already naturally hesitant. The reasons for that are complicated, but they are targeting them and throwing misinformation that way, which doesn't help when, if English isn't your first language, much like my parents, you get your information from your communities, you get your information from people around you who you trust, who look like you, sound like you, speak your language. And this is part of the problem we have, I think, with some of the messaging we've had in the UK. It's all very oriented towards middle-class British white people, and people like my family and my parents can't necessarily relate to that, and they look to people like me, or they may look to, you know, it's something that they've seen on WhatsApp mm. that someone has sent them, which we know could be grossly inaccurate and could be dangerous. One of the things being thrown around out there is that the vaccine could cause infertility. Millions of doses have been administered worldwide. We haven't seen a signal for that at all. There's actually no scientific basis to it. And there's, that's not a good reason for not having the vaccine. And you don't even need to wait after you've been vaccinated to get pregnant. That advice has now changed as well. Um... Dr Nigat, I mean, I know you feel it's, it's the same passion as Dr Ranj and Zoe do, and you say that cultural boundaries play a big part in this. Just explain what that means. So uh, I echo a lot of what um, Ranj is saying. Vaccine hesitancy isn't something that's new at all. When you've had health inequalities, which have been rife within our health system for decades and decades, obviously there's going to be misinformation. And communities such as myself, we turn to our own first for information, and then we get information from abroad where health, public health information isn't actually vetted very much. And so the difficulty you have then is, is that how do you know what's accurate and what's not accurate, especially when there is mistrust. And I'm going to say that there is mistrust of mainstream medicine and also stuff that's coming through the government and the information um, Zoe and Rand will agree with me from the government has even been difficult to understand the Pfizer vaccine you meant to have two doses about uh, you know uh, three weeks apart but then it's 12 weeks apart and when are we going to get that and that puts added fuel to the fire and the most important thing is is that to vet that is try and get 
individuals like us who are from that community to say to them, have the trust within us, know that we've taken the vaccine, we're safe, the vaccine is definitely safe. And then also trying to appeal to the religious groups who might have hesitancy as well. So for example, the Islamic groups out there or people who practice their faith very closely, the Jewish community, the Catholic communities who are worried, A, are these vaccines halal or not? Do they have genetic modified or fetal cells in there? That's another misconception that's going around as well. Um, are they, is there alcohol in there? Is there something that's not permissible in my religion? It's really important that at this point I make absolutely clear all faith groups have said that the vaccine is safe and all imams and leaders from their community have come out to encourage their community because no time is more important now than for us to come together. This is, this is not a time for us to be you know, in different camps, because mm. our, our lives depend on us actually working together on this. Zoe, um, why is there resistance within the black community? I, mean, I know that your own family, you say that even in WhatsApp group, they've shared media that, uh, that is uh, actively against the vaccine. And before you answer that, in the early days of this, and I don't know where we are with research now, uh, Zoe, but uh, we, we were led to believe that as far as that early research was concerned, um, members of the BAME community were more susceptible to adverse, a serious adverse reaction to the vaccine. Is that still the case? So serious adverse reaction to the vaccine, there's no evidence to support that. Um, people from BAME communities we know are more susceptible to the more severe forms of illness from the virus, but not more likely to have any adverse reactions to the vaccine. In fact, across all ethnicities, there have been very few adverse reactions to, to the vaccine. It's, it's no, really, no, 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 really no, 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 I'm, I, I'm talking about to, to actually the virus. So uh, this is... This the virus, is, yes. Yeah, to, to, the, to the virus. So, so no evidence, because it was initially said that, uh, that, hold on a second, you know, this may be affecting different social uh, parts of the country, different cultural parts of the country. So that is now, we don't believe that is to be the case. So, no, we do. So people from black group, um, ethnic groups, people from South Asian ethnic groups, for very complex reasons, are more likely to be affected, more likely to be harmed by this virus and more likely to die from this virus. There are a number of reasons for that. And it's really complex, you know, all the way down to, you know, people are more likely to live in multi-generational households. People are more likely to have jobs where they're poorer earning jobs. So they're more likely to be doing public service but all the way through to the way that people access healthcare differently. People, and it comes back to this issue of distrust. And we see within the black community, this report showed that the majority of black people actually said, and this was back in November, so hopefully things have moved on a little bit, but the majority, the black community was the only community in which the majority said that they were unlikely or very unlikely to have the vaccine. And the disinformation and the stuff I see on WhatsApp, even from my own family, is really unhelpful and really dangerous, like we've spoken about. But there is this bigger, I think, underlying issue of distrust and where that comes from. And particularly within the black community, there's a lot of distrust of the government. There's a lot of distrust about healthcare systems. And that's with good reason. And I think we have to put the message out there. We have to acknowledge that there's good reason. But, black people but so in the past have been... I mean, I, I muddied the water a moment ago by saying uh, the word virus instead of vaccine, so I apologise for that, or the other way around. But, um, but, the, but the, the thing is here, what, what is the reason? What are the fundamental reasons here why people who are, as you say, susceptible, um, would not take the one thing that could, could help? Because they're afraid, they're scared, they're distrust. And, you know, in, if we go back hundreds of years, black people were experimented on. Black women would have gynecological surgery with no anesthesia to test what level of anesthesia would be appropriate for white women. And yes, that's a long time ago. And yes, we've moved on. But even right now, today in the NHS, there is institutional racism. And this SAGE report, the first time really, has acknowledged that. And I think for the black community to take the vaccine, which I really want them to do, they really should do because the vaccine is safe. I think that acknowledgement needs to be made alongside the information about why the vaccine is safe. And it's so important that people from the black community take it, especially people who are older. And sadly, it's the older people that remember when things were worse. They've experienced it. They've seen it with their own eyes. So there's this deep mistrust. And there was an occurrence last year as well, a really unfortunate situation where some French scientists, and it was just two people, it was, nothing was going to happen, but French scientists suggested 
that the COVID vaccine should be tested on people in Africa. And that just things like that add fuel to the fire of this distrust of things that have happened in the past. So the acknowledgement around the reason, the very valid reasons why people are hesitant, acknowledging that backed up with information from people like us, from their communities who are credible and who they trust. That's the solution to this problem. And the hope, you know, from the three of us here today, we're all saying that yeah. we're very privileged that we know we have the knowledge and we've researched this thoroughly. And we're all recommending to our family members that they too do take the vaccine when it's offered to them. Um, so the more people from our communities that can stand up like we are and Ranch, do this. Ranch, what, uh, um, what, do you, what do you say now? What's your advice? Look at your screens right now. There are three people of colour from three very different cultural backgrounds who work in this field who are telling you that this is the best way to go. We have nothing to gain from this. We have no reason to lie to you. We want our communities to survive and thrive. And we are telling you, please protect yourselves, protect those around you, listen to the experts, go to reputable places of information. If you have any questions, please just ask. Thank you. Dr Nigga. Well, exactly the same. And I think it's really important to have information that is um, in your language. So I produce a lot of TikTok videos in Punjabi and Urdu, although actually my Urdu gets mixed up with English quite a lot. <laughs> but and, and that's where I'm uh, trying to communicate directly to my community because the language barriers are something that the NHS has really failed on decades upon decades to tackle. But now is not the point to sort of say, let's create more divisions. I think it's also really important to say that we shouldn't dismiss people who have questions either. If they've got important concerns and worries, we should be actually um, being upfront and honest and tackling them and not just dismissing them. Because again, that also creates more fuel to the fire. And having people who represent you on screen, and I think Rang said it beautifully actually, to have three people of color. When I was growing up, I never saw this. I never had this as a doctor, even myself. So to know that well, I'm represented, someone who looks like me is on telly talking to me, that is like amazing. And, and that just now shows how much we've come together as a community. So please, when you're invited, come, come for the vaccine, because this is how we're going to try and get out of the pandemic. And I want a Christmas surrounded by you guys. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, a, and a final very quick word to the black community, Zoe. Um, I mean, my final word is, you know, take action. If you're in a position where you're being offered the vaccine and you have questions and you're not certain, don't do nothing and wait and ignore it and not take up that offer. Take whatever action you need to answer your questions till you get to the point where you do feel comfortable to go ahead. Thank, Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much, much indeed.